Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to the Morning Toast. Happy Thursday, the Thursday of the longest week of all time. Hey, Claude, how are you doing? Hello, Jacqueline. This is literally the longest week of all time. Thank you so much for pointing that out. Yeah, no, I I felt it to be important. Last night, I was sitting in bed and I was like, it's only Wednesday. This is criminal. And then my night really took a turn for the worst and we are a little late on delivering today's podcast and I just need to own up to that and explain what happened here. Starting at 4 a.m. my smoke detector alarm started going off beeping once every 30 seconds. I was like laying in bed up timing it and it just stopped. We had to change the battery and it was atrocious. I was up from four to five because I couldn't fall back asleep with it in the background it Mm -hmm. like it didn't keep me up after that but like it was so annoying I had white noise on I had my noise canceling airpods in I could still hear it and I was like well we definitely can't podcast if that's gonna beep once every 30 seconds I will drive people insane no that's a particular type of torture especially if you're trying to sleep yeah and I was just like so worried about Bruno but I checked in on him and he was sleeping like a little baby I guess it was just me these days I'm a light sleeper it's the body's way of getting you ready for motherhood so I've heard Mm. so I wake up at anything and then I can't fall back asleep tarch tarch but here we are and it's off so I have peace in my home (laughs) There's nothing like peace in your own home. No, there is not. How are you doing? I'm good. We have a great episode for you guys. Oh, I got a haircut. You didn't really like say anything since we've been on this interface. Well, I actually, I did notice it when you were combing your hair, which is like a new thing that you like to do while we podcast from home. Well, okay. Podcasting from home. I don't have a desk. My desk, quote unquote, is my vanity where all my makeup so I'm sitting in front of like, you know, combs, brushes, makeup, makeup brushes. How am I not supposed to touch them and use them? I know it, it's really it's trying, but it's extremely trying. I did see your new layers and I was like, I'll wait till the show to address the haircut in the room. And it looks so fabulous. Thank you. It's like a very subtle haircut. But for me, it's like I feel like a completely different woman. And it's like, is everyone looking at my hair? I think that they are. I actually knew that you were coming on here with your fresh haircut. So I was like, okay, I have to do my hair today. And I need something to cover my big fat face because yesterday Mm -hmm. was just a whole lot of face. So I did my hair and I have you to thank for that. It's a pleasure. I have you to thank for making me so. You know that song? No. Gavin DeGraw? Mm-mm. Oh, my God. You haven't lived. No, I'm so sorry. Where is Gavin? We need new music. <sighs> Looking for Gavin. Where Very low-key guy. Constantly, you know, coming up for air and then going back down. It's been a while since we got new music. It always slaps. He's one of my favorite artists probably of all time. Like, he's like Kelly Clarkson level to me in that, yeah. like, pantheon of just can do no wrong and Mm -hmm. I would like to put it out there I'd like to manifest in like the word the buzzword of 2022 I'd like Mm -hmm. to manifest some new Gavin DeGraw music it's not gonna happen unless you say it out loud Uh, that's not how I roll but that's what the kids are doing they're manifesting things and there's something to all of this I don't know they really think they're doing something and I'm not convinced but I don't want to yuck. I don't want to yuck someone's yums. And what? And one member of the manifestation crew is the Snatchler, and yes. so I just I'm going to leave it at that. Speaking of not doing something, I do have to let you know that I did not watch The Real Housewives of Orange County last night. What happened? I went out to dinner, and it just like it wasn't in the cards. It wasn't in the curds. Okay, well, I watched this week and last week, so I'm all caught up, and I will give you my thoughts. It's pretty good. It's it all is. over the place, and I just. I need to parse out how I'm feeling, but I feel like it has the makings of like really good groundwork for a really good season. Just this Noella girl is confused. She's off the charts. She's confusing. I'm confused and yeah. we will have to break it down. So un- that's sad that you didn't watch, but everyone's entitled. It wasn't, it wasn't, oh, what? Man, I have this handheld mirror and I remember last night when I was like, doing my makeup the handheld mirror fell off my table and I just realized it's completely shattered is that seven years of bad luck it depends if you subscribe to those notions okay so I don't yeah no I use a handheld mirror that is cracked that's been cracked for two years and I still use it every day so I guess that's technically bad luck I should throw it away but I don't want to get it it still works I can still see myself 
Oh, that. But now I'm just like looking at the mirror and it's haunting me. Throw it away. I will now that I know about it. Not your problem. Somewhere. Not my problem. Well, we have a lot to talk about today, and then we'll re- recap Real Housewives of Orange County. I also started a new book last night. My th- eight months in, I'm finally reading my first pregnancy book. Oh, good. It's called Expecting Better by Emily Oster. My doctor recommended it. And so far, I'm really enjoying it. But like all of my dreams last night were like pregnancy statistics. Yeah. And that's just not somewhere I want to be. So I'm going no. to try and read it like more in the afternoon and not right before bed. Otherwise, like my brain is going into like charts mode. Yeah, no, you're consumed with the pregnancy. Yeah, but and I'm every time I'm like reading a new chapter, I'm like, fuck, I should have read this in the beginning. But no one really like yeah. vehemently recommended any books to me. And so far, like everything that she's saying that you should do, like um, there's nothing that was like, oh, fuck, I did that and I shouldn't have. Except for right. the time I ate um, tuna fish. I just, it was. But was it good? It, uh, you know what? It wasn't once. It was twice. And um, <sighs> it was good. But I hope those mercury levels, I hope everything's okay. I think you're okay. Okay. But if not, blame Ben. He forced it of on course. me. Of course. It's Ben's fault. When in doubt, blame Ben. 100%. How is Ben doing? For anything. He's doing very, very well. Um, he's not here right now, which is why it's so quiet and just a pe- like perfect way- environment for podcasting because Ben's toxic energy is not here. I understand completely. And you have mm-hmm. the peace. We have dew and brew in brew. the background. And they we do have a live studio audience, so that's really exciting. Everyone's been asking us to like get people. <laughs> Fan Fridays are back. <laughs> Fan Fridays are back. Two seats, dew and brew. Sometimes, maybe, if her mother will allow it. Magoo. Oh, I miss Magoo. Um, so, yeah, I think we should dive in. I have uh, nothing to say in the TV recap, but lots to say elsewhere. Okay, so without further ado, do, 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 it is time for the Fast Five stories that you need to know before you wake up and take a bite out of your morning toast. <sighs> and today's episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have, have used BetterHelp online. You shouldn't wait till things get unbearable before you go to therapy. It's a tool to utilize before things get worse, and it can help you avoid those lows. BetterHelp is sponsoring today's episode, and our listeners will get 10% off their first month of BetterHelp um, when they go to betterhelp.com slash toast. That's betterhelp, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash toast for 10% off their first month. Check it out. Wonderful. So what do we got for the for the first story? Oh, is it the picture of Kim P? It the is. Mahamas? I hate to lead with the same story like three days in a row, but this is just developing breaking news, and... We asked and we received pictures of Kim and Pete catching rays together in the Bahamas. So displaying different approaches to dressing for the region, Kim Kardashian and Pete Davidson were snapped enjoying each other's company in the Bahamas on Wednesday. Paparazzi caught the two walking on a dock together after disembarking from a boat for their daytime date. Kim wore an all-black ensemble, a plunging black top that looked like a one-piece bathing suit um, with a black Louis Vuitton backpack and slip uh, uh, with um. Sorry, he was wearing that. She was wearing a black plunging black top and baggy distressed denim paired with matching shades. And he was wearing a blue letterman jacket with cream colored sweats underneath and his Louis Vuitton backpack. Okay. I'm sorry. Kim's jeans were out of control. Do you know how hot it is in the Bahamas? Like, what are you doing? I, I'm hesitant to comment on Kim's fashion because I feel like, you know, I'm commenting on Michelangelo painting the Sistine Chapel. 100%. And who am I? But what, like, this was... No, by the way, outside of the environment that she was in, the outfit is, you know, like, objectively cute. But what are you wearing big old jeans for on the beach? I have no freaking clue. That was really shocking. They're so mismatched. Neither of them, they don't look like they're going to the same place, and neither of them look like they're in the Bahamas. The jeans were really shocking. But again, like, I really try to just let go and like let Kim do her fashion thing and I'm sure like in two years I'll be wearing baggy jeans on the beach because that's just how these things go. I can actually assure you that I will never be doing that and what like looking at those pictures was giving me armpit sweat I'm like do these people not get warm yeah no it was it wasn't the aesthetic that I was looking for but I'm still happy to to have the pictures well it was a watershed moment it's the first photo of them 
that I've seen that's like somewhat vis like the one that we have from you know Knott's Berry Farm or whatever it's called was blurry and dark like for me this is a real photo of them and it's high quality and it's ins- it's like crazy well we have we have a few things like we've had like fans like seeing them at the movie theaters in Staten Island where like they were together we had you know them with flavor 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 but yeah this these are like photos that should be iconic but the outfits are making them iconic for the wrong reasons no these are photos that should be iconic but the outfits are making them moronic yeah yeah and it and it pains me to say to say that but but I do believe this is the first paparazzi photo of them correct um together I can't I can't decipher what's paparazzi and what's like fans no I'm not talking about fans but the fans have gotten some good stuff of them yeah, but it's not, like, premium. Like, this is really premium. Like, I could see, you know, the pores on Kim's face. Like, it's really high quality. Yeah, but the the outfits are so low quality, it, it really took away from this really special moment. I agree. It's an extremely confusing photo because you would see those two people and you'd be like, oh, they're going to a Winter Wonderland-themed party. And then they're literally on the beach. Yeah. Also, she posted a selfie, like a bikini selfie today. So it's like she's, you know, doing the vacation thing. Mm -hmm. Where was that picture? Where's that paparazzi photo? She's posting in real time. Yeah. No, but it's like, okay, so you're wearing a bikini in the Bahamas. Like, can we see that? Right, right, right. Like, where did the jeans go? (laughs) Where did the jeans go? They need to go into the incinerator. (laughs) And that's just insane to me. They were the biggest pair of jeans. They probably take up so much space in her suitcase. Like, how does she have space to pack other things? Yeah, those are some big jeans. They're enormous. I hope that that trend just does not trickle down to me, honestly. But <sighs> but I can't help. You never know. You never, you really never know. And, and I'm sure in two years I will look back at this and be clowning on myself. But I really don't think so. I just want to say, like, but I don't never dislike know. the jeans. Like, I think objectively they look cute. It's just an un necessary place to be wearing them beyond beyond okay yeah yeah it definitely took away from this really special moment though it is still incredibly special agreed are you ready for our next story some more kardashian news these are the only people making news these days and i was thinking about it and i was like you know what i think it is because when i'm reading the stories it's like either it's the kardashians and like what their farts smell like or it's like Mm -hmm. every celebrity has covid right now No, you're right. They're the only people keeping it interesting in Hollywood, and they're putting the industry and the town on their back. But it's because I think, like, everyone has COVID. So they're not. And, I mean, like, so-and-so having COVID, like, isn't news. So they're all we're talking about. Yeah, I thought of that yesterday, how, like, literally our whole show is always about the Kardashians. We, it comes in waves, but I do feel like this week in particular, because everyone else is sort of out of commission. A hundred percent. But Corey Gamble is showing off support for Tristan Thompson with a jersey with his name on it amid the paternity scandal. Kris Jenner's boyfriend, Corey Gamble, made a surprising show of support for Tristan on Tuesday, holding up the NBA player's number 13 jersey for paparazzi in L.A. Gamble had attended Thompson's Sacramento Kings losing game against the L.A. Lakers, which came on the heels of him copping to the paternity suit against him. Wait, Tristan plays for the Sacramento Kings? Yeah, I learned that yesterday, too. That's really sad. Where was he last playing? He was playing in Boston. Yeah, and the, and the Cavaliers at one point. But So Sacramento's, it, I mean, if they were still trying to work it York. out. It's in New York. It's in New York, I mean, yes. not New York. I I'm love sorry. Sacramento and New York this time of year. <laughs> so beautiful. It's in California, yes, logistically. I'm just talking about, like, his career. I didn't know that, like... The way that I perceive the NBA, and again, that's just this is just my own unique um, POV. It's like the Sacramento Kings, no shade to their fans, is like one of the most like broke down, unwell like franchises. It used to be owned by the Maloofs. I never have spent time thinking about the Sacramento Kings. And if you asked me two days ago what the Sacramento team name was, I don't know if I could have given you an answer. Well, that was the other thing. I was like, and maybe I'm actually just making this up. I was pretty sure the Sacramento Kings changed their name. Did they not? Why would they change it? They were in desperate need of a rebrand. You're asking the wrong girl. But I don't think. I guess if the article says the Sacramento Kings. It doesn't. I don't think that they did. There's a lot. There's been a lot of changes with sports teams, but I think it's like more so like the LA Rams, the Chargers, Mm -hmm. like those football teams. I haven't seen. Not that I would see. But I haven't heard about uh, basketball teams. No, I just like, 
in my mind, I was living in a world where they changed their name. But in the actual world, I don't think that that happened. I don't think it happened too, but Tristan did join the team and Chloe and Corey seems to be supporting him. What are your oh. thoughts? People are, are extremely pressed. I'm extremely disappointed in Corey. I'm not really sure what he, he, he was signaling. Like, is it, you know, what was he saying with the jersey? Like, I... I, I can't imagine how someone could even defend Tristan. That's why I'm like struggling with. I coming, think so, coming I think up with what something. he's saying with the jersey is like Tristan's my boy, and he's made mistakes, but like he's still family. Yeah, or even friend. And I have to the be thing- honest. I know people like are enraged about this sort of, and expect like me to have that same energy. But this doesn't really bother me. Like, if the whole family were like supporting him and having his no, back, sorry, I would, it bothers me. I would be confused. But like, if one member of the family like wants to stand by Tristan or like be there for him, okay, agreed. If it if it comes like actually like in a personal on a personal sense, like standing by them. But you know, like Chloe has been so publicly embarrassed by this man so many fucking times. That right now, he doesn't really need anyone, like, publicly standing up for him. Like, that actually pisses me off. And I'm really disappointed in Corey because he should know better. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I just would hope that, like, whatever, like, that if Chloe, that Chloe is fine with this. And I feel like she might be. I feel like she doesn't want everyone to just up and leave him. You know, if he, if him and Corey are really good friends, then maybe Corey should be there for him. And he just, like, showed off the jersey. And like, I don't know. It didn't really, like, bother me so much. Maybe it should. No, it's just And like, Corey is a king, so, like, I just trust his judgment. Well, that's the thing. Corey is a king, so it's like, where is he going with this? I think he's, like, going to be, like, a good friend, you know? But it's just not adding up. But what if they were, like, really good friends before, and now he's, like, obviously made this mistake. What do you do? It's tough, but you side with the family always. Yeah, but maybe they're not requiring people to take sides. I don't know. It's just different because it's True's dad. He's never, he's not going anywhere, really. Right, that's the thing. This person's in their life forever. Um, And I I have to imagine Corey is very much like a peacemaker in the family. Yes. And constantly bringing people together. So I I imagine that this is his way of doing that, but it's too soon. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. Are you ready for our next story? Yes, ma'am. Chris Noth is being cut from, and just like that, season finale. He filmed in Paris, and those scenes are now cut amid sexual assault allegations. The upcoming season finale for And Just Like That will reportedly no longer feature Chris Noth. His character, Mr. Big, previously, spoiler alert, (laughs) big spoiler, died in the first episode. um, But they were were seen photographed filming in Paris, and he was supposed to be in the season finale, and now he will not be. How? A Probably ghost? flashback. Not that I watch. But. Yeah, maybe. Now, no more. I mean, this really doesn't disrupt a storyline at all if he's already dead. Right. So it's not it's really not a big deal. They're really doing anything or making any hard mm. decisions. Hundred percent. They're so brave. They're like we're cutting a dead person out. They're so brave. Yeah, I agree. I don't really care. Like now that he's dead, bye. Yeah. Okay. Well, we were curious to see what sort of position they would take on. Everything that happened, they all put out some lukewarm statements, right. and now they're cutting him from a scene that was probably irrelevant to begin with. So, <laughs> still doing the least. You know, I was going to say the three of them did like pen a letter together supporting the women who spoke forward. Um, but yeah, very much not making a thing of this. Yeah. Okay, cool. Have you still been watching the show? I have. Um, the. A new episode came out today, so I obviously haven't seen that yet. But the most recent episode, like, was kind of crazy. Really? Yeah. I still stand by that, like, I mm, I don't know if you – I honestly can't tell if you would like it because some episodes are really good and some episodes are really bad. But for the most part, like, I really just am enjoying it. It's a quality show, like, with quality writing, quality characters who you've known and loved for years. And it's just, like, a fun thing to go on. And honestly, the best part is when new episodes come out, like, people's hot takes on – on TikTok are really premium because so much of the shit that goes down in the show is so unbelievably stupid. And it's fun to see people all over the world talking about it on TikTok. That's fun. And you do love to be a part of something. Precisely. Okay. So you're a part of this. I still don't think I will watch it. I came close to starting Emily in Paris last night and I was just like, no. No, No, seriously. Like I'm telling you, don't. I would rather read a book by an economist about the statistics of pregnancy. <laughs> That's where really where I went. I was like, I do not have, I just, I'm on such a different wavelength than Emily. Do you know what I mean? 
And as you should be, because Emily is an unwell, <laughs> disturbed sociopath. It's the worst fucking show. And I really don't think you should bring that energy into your pregnancy right now. Like, you're an extremely sensitive time in your life. So I honestly don't know if I'm going to watch it. Because I had the opportunity. I had the time. I had the energy. And I chose not to. So it might have just removed itself from my content plate. Seriously, don't do it. Like, for okay. real. I okay. wish I could get back those eight hours. Oh, by the way, are you following this Jeopardy thing? No, but I saw that you are, and I want you to explain it to me. Okay, so there's a contestant who is, her name is Amy, and she, side note, was also recently just robbed, which was very bizarre. That's just what like, I saw. Yeah, but beyond that, she had gained, like, some some fame because she's on her way to, I think last night was her 26th win in a row. She's almost at a million dollars won. She's... So smart. Like I watched last night's episode, Jackie. It wasn't even like a competition. Like she was ahead by thirty thousand dollars. It is. It's just like, it's oh, and Ken Jennings is hosting currently. He's the p- person who currently holds the most wins. Well, how many She's wins inch in her way? How many wins and how much money does Ken Jennings have? I'm not entirely sure. Um, let's Google Ken's Ken Jennings win streak here. And second question was the Rob- oh my god what he won seventy four shows and two point five million dollars. Damn. And my next and question, Amy, what's her name? Was the Where robbery is- related at all to this current Jeopardy streak? No, it's just incredibly like weird timing because she's in LA filming these episodes. Wow, that's crazy. And she's so okay. Her name, she's okay. Yes, she she's came okay. Back to the show, she's okay. She was, she was okay. Her name is Amy Schneider, and she is, I think, on her twentieth win. She's got no, a ways. Twenty sixth. That's what you said. She's got a ways to go if she's going to beat Ken Jennings at his own game. But I feel like if he's the host now, he's going to try and trip her up. But I'm telling he's you, he's not going to let like, her. This woman couldn't be stopped. And you know what? I knew a Jeopardy clue last night from, like, The Crown. What was it? So the the category was antonym, and it was uh, – the A was in quotes. So they were giving definitions of words, and you had to guess the antonym of that definition that starts with an A. So it was to take the throne. So the antonym of taking the throne is abdicate. abdicating the throne. And they didn't get it. I was literally screaming at my fucking TV. I'm like, abdicate, bitch. Abdicate. Amy didn't get it? No, it was Chantal, one of the girls. Oh, my God. Stressful. And by the way, Amy's so good. She's not even just winning. Like, they literally interrupted the game last night and was like, oh, you know, she guessed for the same category. She guessed ambiguous when the answer was actually um, another word that starts with A. Arbitrary. And Oh, yes. Oh, my God. Um, very good. <laughs> so she guessed ambiguous, which wasn't the correct answer. And then like two minutes later, the judges were like, actually, your answer was technically correct, Amy. And they gave her the money. Wow. So she's changing. She's, she's changing. so smart. She's changing the game. Right. Like she's creating answers that even the experts didn't even think of. Damn. I hope she goes far. But I know that Ken's not going to let her beat him. She already has gone far. And that is so funny. <laughs> no, but like she she has ways to go if she wants to, you know, come for Ken's throne. No, but it's just been a really long time since I think someone has made this many, um, this long of a run. And what's her, what's her personal story? What's her background? What does she do? She's, she's a trans woman and she's an engineering manager. And how I'm not did, sure what that means. Did she, like, does she have hobbies that have allowed her to know all this okay, stuff? Like, I didn't read her autobiography. No, but like, I, I do know. wonder, people who are so how do they know all this well-versed shit? in trivia, like how do they know all of this is it part of their job is it just like for fun no and some people definitely have like niche knowledge on random trivia but like you to know everything from like architecture to plants composers to pop culture even like there's sometimes more often than not like current events so I don't know I don't know what you do for a living or what your interests are that get you to know that much stuff yeah okay unless you work in academia yes but even still you would have a specialized Mm -hmm. Subject. Subject makes you think. Unless you're like a homeroom yeah. teacher. And you or no, it's, or it's, your substitute. <laughs> 100%. 100%. Okay. Are you ready for our next story? 
only if it's a story that's brought to you by Manscaped. Cheers to the new year and making resolutions you can actually keep. Have you added self-care to your routine? Our sponsors at Manscaped have the perfect tools to help keep you and your significant other clean and tidy this year. Manscaped tools for his jewels are so good you'll want them for yourself. The Lawn Mower 4.0 is all you'll need for his balls and your bikini line. Set your first New Year's resolution with good intentions and join the 4 million people worldwide who trust Manscaped with our exclusive offer. So if you go to manscaped.com and you use the code TOAST, you'll get 20% off and free shipping. They have tons of products at Manscaped. Obviously, the Performance Package 4.0 is one of their most popular where they um, have the lawn mower. It's an electric trimmer that's designed with skin-safe technology to reduce cuts. It comes equipped with a 400K LED light. Um, it shines super bright. The products are so great. They're electric products. They have great skincare products. They also have cute travel cases. Perfect for the man in your life and, in turn, the perfect gift for yourself. You'll be upgrading both you and and his grooming routine this year and using the best tools for the job whether your resolution is to work out more travel to new places be sure to travel to manscaped.com for the exclusive offer of 20 percent off plus free shipping with code toast again get 20 percent off and free shipping with code toast at manscaped.com that's 20 percent off free shipping at manscaped.com use code toast wonderful our next story, the 2022 Grammy Awards have been postponed due to the uncertainty surrounded COVID-19 Omicron variant. So the Grammys are postponed until further notice. The Recording Academy and CBS announced, announced in a joint statement on Wednesday that the award show would be postponed amid the ongoing COVID surge. So, so does that mean they're not announcing like the nominees either? I I don't know. I guess not. I mean, I'm sure they're hoping that they can do it like a month later or something and just move on but they're gonna have to make some decisions soon right because it's like you're fucking with the timetable of like when when music released is considered for what years yeah yeah and then eventually like if they put it on too long like then we're into the next year and Mm -hmm. i I mean maybe they should just do it without a show and just like announce the nominations and then just take me back to such dark times yeah yeah it's so upsetting. And also, like, we're coming into award season. So if the Grammys are already, you know, right. putting the brakes on, then I'm sure a lot the of first us. first of all. The, and Golden Globes isn't even happening. In any, yeah, but that has nothing to do with COVID. Right. That has to do with them being a fraudulent organization. But then the other shows, like, who wants to be the one show that's, you know, they all sort of follow each the other. super spreader. So this is crazy news for the Grammy world. And also, like, a bummer for any big artists of this year who would have been, you know, sweet. Olivia Rodrigo. Olivia Rodrigo. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So we'll keep you posted on that. And our fifth and final story, if you're ready for it. Why don't you sing it today and I'll play percussion, okay? Okay. <clears throat> it's the final story. do 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 it's not it doesn't sync up we'll go acapella <laughs> it doesn't that's a magic number no that's the instrumental version oh that's what i meant not acapella moron damn it doesn't sync my up. god it's like i don't even know music truly our fifth and final story is a little Coachella news. Kanye West, Billie Eilish, will headline Coachella and Swedish House Mafia has been added to the mix. So we recently reported that Travis Scott, who was set to headline Coachella, is no longer headlining. And instead, Billie, Eilish, Billie Eilish and Kanye are slated to headline the 2022 Coachella Festival. And now also, as an aside, Swedish House Mafia has been added to the bill. So... Okay. Also, this is another situation where it's like, who even knows if Coachella is going to happen at this point? Oh, right. But let's operate as if it is. Oh, my God. This is so so, so depressing. Like, I I refuse to give in. Like, for real. It's happening. Just, like, let it be. Are you going to go to Coachella? No. I know you. Oh, I'm not saying I want it to happen because, like, I care about the music. I just, like, I cannot. I'm getting so many bad vibes this week. Like. Yeah. No, you just want to keep moving forward. I just want to keep live events yes on yes but i mean this is like if assuming coachella happens this is great news for the fans i mean billy eilish has performed a number of times and kanye will be a great headliner so i feel like it. it all it all works out so if if i asked you in your opinion who 
what is Swedish House Mafia? What would you say to that? That's a really interesting question. <laughs> I would say that they are the original, like, house music guys. I think it's... No, totally. I think it's three people. And yeah, do you know who any of them are? That's my question. I just know that, like, one of them, I believe at one point, had a wife who was on the show on E! about Europeans living in L.A. What? That is not what I was expecting you to That's say. That's what I think about. I need to Google it. Well, because I, like, wanted to tell you, the three people in Swedish House Mafia are already on their own, all three enormous DJs. It's Axwell, Steve Angelo, and Sebastian Ingrosso. And I just thought that was interesting. Like, Yeah, no, I'm 100% right. I just Googled it. Isabel Adrian, she was on Euros. What was the show? Euros of Hollywood. Damn, E has really tried a lot of crap over the years to like remain relevant after the Kardashians. And she is married to Steve Angelo. And so she was like, there were some of the other people in the cast either were DJs or, you know, had like DJ associations. And she was the creme de la creme because she was married to Steve Angelo, Swedish House Mafia. Yeah, you'd think like she'd be too good for that show. Yeah, honestly, the show was pretty good. Everything on E just like is so sad. No, E has had some good shows and I don't know why they get. Why they can't get their shit together. Yeah. There were some really interesting cast members. Um, oh yeah, on Bleona. Have you heard of Bleona? Do you ever watch Mm-mm. his show? Bleona no. is like a huge. I've never even heard of it. Bleona is a huge um, Albanian singer. She's like the mm. Cher of Albania. Wow, it's like Caprice from Ladies of London. Yeah. No, it was a really good show. Justice Justice for Euros of Hollywood. I didn't see myself going down that road today. You know what's so weird? Like, I don't think I can remember a time when you brought up, like, a cultural reference that I've never heard of. <laughs> I've never heard of the show. It was only, I think it was a one-season wonder. Your favorite. I mean, it, that's the only shows I watch. No, but there's something about E. Like, someone... I don't understand, like, what goes on there, but they are doing a new show. I saw a commercial, um, relatively famous, where it's, like, children of famous people are, like, going to a farm or something. So it's trying to be, like, Filthy Rich Cattle Drive. Yeah, it's giving, like, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. Okay, who's on it? Anyone we know? I, the commercial was, like really poorly produced because they didn't tell me any of the famous people who were on oh well we could also just google it relatively famous famous cast ranch rules yeah okay i don't know any of these people oh really Mm -hmm. like in a very real way well that makes it like not fun but it seemed like a good idea yeah it does seem like a good idea but i mean maybe when they explain who they are like but i I mean the only name i recognize there's one hasselhoff Mm. But not the mm. one from Rich Kids. Was there a Hasselhoff in Rich Kids? I think so. Haley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I was actually thinking about Rich Kids of Beverly Hills yesterday. Great show. Great show. Great launching platform for so many of my favorite people to follow on Instagram. 100% agreed. Um, so the past five, so I would those say, were, were the past like, five. I feel as though you very much needed to know them. And now we're going to get into the TV recap, yeah? I wouldn't say very much needed to know the story. It's like you kind of could know. Yeah, no, that's just like what what you should, could know. Sure. Right. Yes, so you're going to tell me everything that happened on The Real Houses of Orange County so I don't have to watch it. Brought to you by Bowl and Branch. No one wants to cut corners on what's important and few things matter more than a good night's sleep. Bowl and Branch's signature sheets feel so soft and light you'll forget you're not actually sleeping on a cloud. And they're sustainably made for uncompromising quality from field to factory. So, you know, our beds are very, very important to us. And we spend a lot of time in them. And I feel like it makes us somewhat experts on what's good in the bedroom department. And honestly, I have Bowl and Branch sheets on my bed right behind me. It's one of my favorite brands everything I have sheets duvet cover pillowcases I have a throw throw blankets like I really just bought the whole website out the best product they keep me so cool at night I'm a sweater in my sleep and they only use 100% sustainable raw materials um 
so you know that your product feels good, it looks good, it's doing good. And the sheets that I have are the signature hem sheets. They're their best sellers. They're buttery soft, lightweight organic cotton. Um, they're not too hot and not too cool, so they're the perfect sheets for year-round sleepers. And Bold and Branch focuses on quality over quantity, so there's no inflated thread counts. More uh, because more isn't always better. Experience the best sheets you've ever felt at bowlandbranch.com and get 15% off your first set of sheets when you use promo code TOAST to check out. That's bowlandbranch, B-O-L-L-A-N-D, branch.com, promo code TOAST. Great. Thank you. Now it is time for the TV recap. So I watched both episodes of OC last night and I can't really, you know, piece together what was from last week or this Mm -hmm. week, which is fine. So Noella, like we're literally like one, two, three days out from her divorce and just like seeing how she's behaving and like what she's doing. She goes to like lunch, you know, looks like a nice waterfront lunch. Nicole. with Nicole and she at first it seemed like Noelle is kind of like getting really emotional and Nicole is like let's get out of here because like I guess Nicole like doesn't like public displays of emotion but then upon like watching the the flashbacks it's clear that like Noella was just like drinking so much and was just like having a breakdown like emotionally and also just like being drunk and Nicole was like being the sort of friend I guess she wasn't being like so coddly and like keeping and like comforting but it was just like we need to get the fuck out of here like you're they're already there it was such a crowded restaurant they're already showing Mm -hmm. up with cameras and like this girl is having an actual breakdown like I kind of really appreciated Nicole's approach so I watched that episode the one from two weeks ago and I actually didn't see it that way I actually thought Nicole was being hella rude and now like knowing now that Noella was probably just super drunk I still think Nicole was fucking rude no like they showed flashbacks of like all the times Noella ordered a drink so it's clear that they were there for a very long time so it's not like she just started crying and she was like let's you know let's split right but she was just being quite emotional I find the whole Noella divorcing I mean it's really first of all it's bizarre to come onto a show and then episode two like your husband's Serving you but I went to Noella's Instagram because um I just wanted to see like how thirsty she is compared to you know she said Jen was really thirsty which was one of the funniest reads of all time like coming for her for tagging her in a photo of herself which I actually I would never say to someone but that is a, such a red flag as a as a person textbook thirst textbook thirst like here's a picture of myself and I'm going to tag all of the like semi-influential people that I know like I know it's weird no it's so weird I but I would never actually let someone know that's why I didn't like them so I but I understood completely what Noella was saying anyway so I was like I'll go to her Instagram and see like what she's about and it turns out that when her and her husband signed up for the show they had to go through a background check and the background check exposed his tax issues and I guess that given that he wanted to pull out from the show and was like insisting that they pull out and she felt like and these are her words that you know the show at that point was the only thing holding him accountable for all of his lies and you know everything was coming to light so then he splits and now she's like left picking up the pieces and I'm just finding it I kind I mean I hate to agree with her but I'm kind of with Jen where it's like this isn't adding up like the whole thing is so crazy and I feel like some of the women just want to be there for her and I appreciate that and that's a really sweet thing to do but like there's something we've seen so many housewives like go through it that at this point that like now I'm skeptical and I'm cynical and I'm just like there's something weird here Jen says that they're not actually married I think that they I don't think that that's true because like she did get served with papers but like her just reactions to everything and like I am just not fully buying it I think there's like so much more to this story I can't even fathom what the truth could be also it seems like a lot of the women are like slowly turning on Noella like Heather is because Noella like said talked a little bit of crap about Heather she like called her fake two times and that got back to Heather Heather gets like is pretty chummy with Jen and obviously Jen and Noella are like oil and water so I watched the episode and you know Heather went over to Jen's house and like I just find it so amusing how everyone acts around Heather like so desperate to be her friend so desperate to make a connection so desperate to be relevant and the Jen scene like was uncomfortable I'm not gonna lie yeah I didn't expect them to get along but I guess anyone who like acts in deference to Heather is going to be a friend of Heather's speaking of Gina but I actually really like their friendship they went to the racetrack and mm-hmm. I, I, considering I really like Gina and Emily, like if they, I just, I think 
they're friends with Heather more than just because she's like Heather Dubrow. I think Gina and Heather yeah. like just are two people who naturally click and like you can't help who you click with. So 100%. The dynamics are interesting because they're like shifting and there's like a lot of cross contamination. Like there's no clear sides or anything, but there's people who are just like aren't getting along with other people, but there are also some real friendships forming. So yeah. I think that that is a good playing field for the rest of the season but we need to figure out what's going on with Noella there's something about Noella yeah she it's it's something's off for sure with her story Um, I will catch up on that because actually I'm interested also her husband was like on TikTok like making all these videos like addressing confronting like shit that she said about him on the show Yep, and they're, like, going back and forth on Instagram, like, putting out videos about, like, what's happening and who's been there for their kid and, like, how, you know, her credit cards are cut off and all she has is a credit card on Amazon and Instacart and that's how she's gotten by. And it's, like, this is a lot of information for people who you didn't, like, for fans who have been around for four weeks. It's a lot. Mm Mm-hmm. So Um, I'm, I'm cautious. I'm not, like, fully just, like, feeling one way or another yeah well thank you for the debrief thank you for being you thank you for shining a light in this world and thank you guys for listening to the morning toast for me yeah you (laughs) oh my god i like need a manicure oh you guys so much me too Ooh, me too gorgeous yeah no i haven't had one since omicron came to town Mm-hmm. Thank you guys so much for listening to the Morning Toast and Lenny Morning Show where we deliver the fast five stories that you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. We're also available as a podcast and where podcasts can be found. So that's Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, iHeartRadio, CastBox, all the places. So wherever you listen to podcasts, find us Morning Toast and leave a five-star review about how beautiful, stunning, and smart we are. Hope you guys have an amazing day and we'll see you tomorrow for Friday. That is so yes. exciting, you guys. One more day, one more sleep till Friday. One more day of alarm living until we hit that weekend we will see you tomorrow have a good one bye